Hello and welcome. Uh, in this clip, I want to talk to you about modeling using the entity relationship diagram, unary or recursive relationships. Now, unary means a degree of one. Okay. Thus far, we have been dealing with binary relationships, and uh, this is an example of a binary representation. Binary, as you well know, equals two. Uh, the two being that there are two entities participating in the relationship. Okay, so we got that. But as we take a look, we'll notice something interesting about this particular relationship modeled as a binary entity relationship. Okay, so looks simple enough. We've got two entities, supervisor and employee. Uh, supervisor oversees employee. Let's talk about cardinality. A given supervisor can oversee at most, well, definitely multiple employees. You're not much of a supervisor if you're only able to supervise one employee at a time. Okay, a given employee is overseen by, uh, you could argue that that is typically at most one supervisor. If you have some sort of a matrix organization, you may, you may report to multiple people. Uh, God bless you if you do. Um, but Otherwise, it's likely that you just have one, so we'll model it this way. So this is straightforward enough. It looks like a simple example that we've seen many times before. However, here's, here's, the, here's the rub. Here is the tricky part. Supervisors and employees are in many ways the same. A supervisor is surely also an employee. A supervisor, in turn, surely unless they're at the very pinnacle of the organization, also in turn has a supervisor. A uh, supervisor, just like an employee, has you know has the same attributes, name and salary and department and etc. So it's problematic to make a separate copy of a supervisor and treat it as a separate entity because ultimately it is not. And that's okay because we don't have to. We can rely on our trusty friend, the unary relationship, whoop, and do something like this. We have one entity participating in a relationship overseas, the same as before. So a given entity oversees other entity. The only thing we need to add here is role labels, roles, to make clear who's who. Okay, so let's look at what that would look like. An employee, we can say as supervisor and as supervisee here. And then we can read this left to right. An employee acting as supervisor oversees multiple employees acting as supervisee. So a given employee as a supervisor oversees multiple employees. Okay, so we've got an N there. And these little arrows are not part of the diagram. An employee acting as supervisee is overseen by at most one supervisor. Okay? And we could do we could do participation as well. An employee acting as supervisee is it optional for them to have a supervisor? It might be, but I'm going to argue that in most cases it isn't, and you have to have a supervisor. Although you could say, well, what about the president or the CEO or whatever? But they answer to the board. Uh, in any case, let's make it mandatory. So we'll double up this line. And does a supervisor have to have employees that he or she oversees? You could argue yes, but I would say there's probably new supervisors who haven't been assigned any uh, people to supervise yet, supervise yet, so we're going to leave this a single line for the participation. Okay? So, what we'll see um, in this model when we translate it to a relational schema or a plan for what our tables are going to look like is it has an element of recursion to it. Uh, and we can see we can see an example. This is a good example to talk about that, and we already mentioned it. You know, so Bob reports to Alice. 
but Alice in turn reports to Jane and Jane reports to Bill and if this is a big organization this can go on and on. Bill in turn reports to Sue and Sue to Mark and so on and so on and so on and so on. So you've got this, okay, you, you know who Bob's supervisor is, but you in turn need to know that supervisor's supervisor, and that supervisor's supervisor, and that supervisor's supervisor, and so forth. Um, this can be represented in SQL. This is a hierarchy. Uh, it is not elegantly uh, represented in SQL compared to some other alternatives, but it works. You use a unary relationship to accomplish it, and now you have a sense of how to represent that in the entity relationship diagram. And so if that is in fact the case, mission accomplished for this clip. Study hard and see you online.